What you are about to watch may scare you. 2015 was terrible, and 2016 will be worse. Wars, market chaos, and political upheavals will mark this jubilee year, culminating after October 1st. The world's current depression is deepening. Starvation, genocide, and market instability will drain wealth and leave revolution as a significant alternative. Never since the start of World War II has the world been threatened with so many kinds of disaster. Please do not be fearful. We've made this video to help you keep safe, even in this time of great and growing disasters. We helped thousands with our 2015 Shemitah video, and we will help thousands, even millions more with this Jubilee video. Please confront your fears. Take the time to watch this and understand what's taking place at the direction of a handful of soulless, psychopathic elites. Then use its information to become prepared and informed. Everything will change in 2016, but if you're prepared, you can survive and even thrive. On July 14, 2015, world-famous market analyst Jeff Berwick, aka the Dollar Vigilante, warned the world of an impending market collapse to begin by the fall. The mainstream media, aside from a few quotes, have had a blackout on his warnings, even as he became one of the most searched terms on Google. In his earth-shaking warning video, he said that he expected a crisis to come soon. His timing was based on the discovery of the Shemitah seven-year cycle. He gave a very short time frame for the beginning of the collapse. He said it would begin within two months, by September of 2015. Less than a month after he gave the prediction, markets around the world began to collapse. Worldwide, stock markets lost $11 trillion in wealth in the third quarter of 2015. He tried to warn of it, even going so far as purchasing advertising in Times Square with his book Shemitah Trends. How did he know the timing? He spent more than a decade delving into the inner workings of the financial elites who control the world monetary system and their occult beliefs. Now I'm going to test you um, numerology skills by asking you to think about the magic seven. Even going so far as to be, along with Luke Radowski of We Are Change and Dan Dix of Press for Truth, the first people to infiltrate the secret globalist elite meeting Bilderberg in Austria over the summer of 2015. As markets began to collapse in late August 2015, as he'd predicted, his speculative trades made fortunes, with one trade making 4,500% in just three days alone and over 600% in one day. And on the very day in which he stated that the collapse of political, monetary, and financial systems would begin, the Eurozone put up borders for the first time, which he predicted would be the end of the Eurozone. Many assumed that while his predictions for the beginning of a collapse in the fall were correct, that it ended there. But he warned it was just the beginning. He stated numerous times that 2016 would be a bloodbath in the markets. His advice was to short the markets heavily in 2016, and January 2016 saw the worst opening month of trading in world stock market history. The trades that he and his team at the Dollar Vigilante recommended began piling up huge gains. Hundreds from around the world came to his Dollar Vigilante Summit in Acapulco at the anarcho-capitalist event Anarchapulco to hear more in February. In it, he told them that the end of the Shemitah was just the beginning of the crisis that would foment fully in 2016, the once every 49 year Jubilee year. Listen carefully to the following information as it could help protect yourself and your loved ones from devastation in 2016. We're honored to have on once again, Jeff Berwick, the dollar vigilante. And Jeff, I'm running out of superlatives when it comes to describing your prescience over the last year. You say something, everyone says you're crazy, and then it happens. Your latest predictions on what will happen in 2016, though, the Jubilee year? I hope you're wrong. I'm used to being called crazy. But when the majority of the population has been systematically indoctrinated in 12 years of government education camps and barraged by thousands of hours of mainstream television programming, and it's called programming for a reason, anyone who sees things outside the box and can connect the dots looks crazy. But given my track record, I appear to be crazy like a fox. 
But all I've done and am doing is looking at the evidence and analyzing it. And there is more and more evidence that this Jubilee year is not only real, but a part of the plans of the financial elite. Yes, briefly, for those who were asleep for the last few years, tell us about the Shemitah and what you call the Super Shemitah or Jubilee. Sure. I first heard about the Shemitah only a few years ago when Jonathan Kahn put out his best-selling book, The Harbinger. I'm not sure what drew me to the book, but once I read it, I was shocked at the information he had uncovered. He uncovered ancient timing from the Bible and the meaning of the Shemitah, which is tied to Judaism. According to Jonathan, on God's timetable, every seven years is supposed to be a year of washing away. Just like there are seven days in the week and one of them is supposed to be a day of cessation, this also applies to every seven years. And according to the Bible, Jewish people are supposed to forgive their debts every seven years. Khan had discovered the exact dates for the Shemitah, which is kept on the Hebrew calendar, and showed how Shemitah end days have corresponded eerily well with market collapses and other major events. In fact, prior to the most recent Shemitah, the last two major market collapses happened on the exact end day of the Shemitah in 2001 and 2008. This is why I was watching the Shemitah so closely in 2015 when it ended on September 13th. I said that a major market collapse couldn't happen on the end day in 2015 because it fell on a Sunday. But I said that people should be very aware of this time period and markets worldwide had their worst quarter since the last Shemitah losing $11 trillion. Essentially, the Shemitah timing was correct yet again. But there was one big question mark in my mind, and that was that this was the seventh Shemitah. And just like there are seven days in a week and one is for rest, and every seven years is a Shemitah year of rest and washing away of debts, every seventh Shemitah, or every seventh seven year period, or every 49 years, is what I call a super Shemitah. It's called the Jubilee year. And that began in September of 2015 and ends in October of 2016. I contacted Jonathan Kahn, who is now a good friend, and I asked him what the Super Shemitah or the Jubilee year meant. This is how he responded. The year of the Shemitah is marked by economic cessation, financial nullification. But when you reach the seventh Shemitah, basically everything that the Shemitah is, is extended into the following year, which is even more intense, the Jubilee. That being the case, it is possible that the prophetic financial, economic, and geopolitical effect of the Shemitah, its impact on the secular realm as detailed in the book, could likewise be extended into the following year. What happened from May to Elul 2015, August towards September, and especially in the Shemitah's key month of Elul, absolutely comprised the classic pattern, dynamic, and manifestation of the Shemitah cycle. The Shemitah struck the world's financial realms, the realms of trade, production, commodities, commerce, retail, etc. It was the worst year for the stock market in seven years since 2008, the previous Shemitah. It was the worst year for the Baltic Dry Index, key indicator of world trade in the history of that index. It was the worst year to make money in 78 years. In other words, since the Great Depression, since 1937, the year of the Shemitah. Then, in the autumn, it appeared to move into the geopolitical realm. As we began 2016, the stock markets again began collapsing throughout the globe, constituting the worst opening for a year on record. The Chinese economy continued to collapse, as did the price of oil and much more. This was obviously linked to the collapse that took place in the Shemitah. Could there be more based on the 49, 50-year cycle of the 7th Shemitah, the Jubilee, the Super Shemitah? While nothing has to happen, it is absolutely possible. It is wisdom to be ready either way. And so based partially off of this and a lot of other evidence, I began to expect that 2016 would be the year of massive calamities. Yes, you did. You were widely quoted as saying 2016 would be an economic, political and military bloodbath. And it was quite shocking to see just how quickly that began to come true. Yes, it literally began on the very first day of the year and continued throughout the entire first month of the year. There is something called the January effect that many traders in the markets are aware of. It essentially says that what happened in January often continues on for the remainder of the year. If so, we're headed in for one volatile year ahead. But it wasn't just that that started to convince me that the collapse of the economy and the larger financial system would happen in 2016. 
Clue after clue began to reveal itself. Yeah, tell us about them. I should first state for the record that I started the Dollar Vigilante in 2010 and began ringing the warning bells then and said I expected a complete collapse of the current financial and monetary system at earliest by 2015 and at latest by 2020. At the time, I had never heard of the Shemitah Jubilee, but when I found out about them, the timing correlated so well with my timing that I had to pay attention to it. And since then, more and more evidence continues to mount that the Jubilee year, this year, is something of extreme significance. Markets crashed in the third quarter of 2015, right in line with the Shemitah, and the Eurozone collapsed right on the end day of the Shemitah. I began to keep my eyes and ears open for any unusual developments set to happen in 2016 up until the end day of the Jubilee year on October 2nd of this year, and it didn't take long until the puzzle pieces began to reveal themselves. The first was when the IMF announced that the Chinese yuan will begin to be included in the SDR, which is called Special Drawing Rights, Global Currency, beginning on October 1st, 2016. This is just one day before the end of the Jubilee year. And remember, a big part of this washing away that I'm expecting is the destruction of the US dollar. That's why I write the dollar vigilante. Its entire focus is on helping people to survive and prosper through the collapse of the dollar. And a big part of this appears to be a shift from the west to the east. China has been hoarding gold, perhaps in preparation for backing the yuan with gold, as it becomes a key part of a new global currency. Meanwhile in the west, England sold all its gold in the 1980s, Canada just finished selling its gold this year, and is the first western currency with absolutely no gold holdings backing it. As far as the US, the US government says they have a large amount of gold in Fort Knox, but the last time it has been seen by third parties was in the 1950s. It's been nearly 70 years since anyone can verify if it is even still there. And if you haven't seen something in 70 years and the only one telling you it is still there is the US government, I'd go under the presumption that it's not. Also remember that on the front cover of the Rothschild owned Economist magazine in January 1988 it said, get ready for a world currency, with an image of a phoenix rising out of the ashes of burning US dollars with the year 2018 around its neck. And so, my best guess is that the first stage of destroying the US markets, economy and currency will occur this year, with the Chinese yuan taking predominance beginning at the end of the Jubilee year. Then continue collapse through until 2018 when the dollar and all other fiat currencies will be destroyed and amalgamated into a global SDR currency. We're already seeing a war on cash play out with numerous countries moving to get rid of their paper currencies at a tremendous rate. Recently, getting rid of the US $100 bill was discussed as part of this process. By 2018, I expect there will be no such thing as paper cash and the entire world will be trapped into the banking system at negative interest rates to be converted into SDRs. As well, this year was the 50th Super Bowl. The NFL and the Super Bowl seem to have occult connections. After all, how did the US go from its national pastime being a beautiful and relaxing game like baseball to a game based on war with its long bombs and blitzes. And to sum this up, the object of the game is quite different. The object of the game in football is for the quarterback, otherwise known as the field general, to be on target with his aerial assault, riddling the defense by hitting his receivers with deadly accuracy in spite of the blitz, even if he has to use the shotgun. <laughs> With short bullet passes and long bombs, he marches his troops into enemy territory, balancing this aerial assault with a sustained ground attack which punches holes in the forward wall of the enemy's defensive line. In baseball, the object is to go home. I'm going home! I'm going home! Being that the Jubilee is associated with the number 50, I found it interesting that this was the Super Bowl's 50th anniversary and they called it their Jubilee celebration. On the front cover of The Economist, which is always full of occult meaning, it shows a football shape and near it is a muscle-bound Chinese panda and Chinese takeout containers saying panic on it. There is also a little drum set nearby that is colored in red, white and blue and says 50 on it and it has a red sword piercing it perhaps red as in China. And of course, the Super Bowl was held in San Francisco, which is well known for its Chinese association. Not to mention the reports of Chinese troops already being inside the US. 
Yes, you mentioned that last year with Jade Helm. You said that they appeared to be in preparation for some sort of massive civil unrest throughout the U.S. I actually released our first Shemitah video on July 14th on purpose, as a massive military exercise held inside the U.S. began on July 15th. And I commented on it in subsequent videos where people said that nothing major happened during that drill, that something major did happen. Massive amounts of military equipment were distributed at that time throughout the country. And coincidentally, just as we released this video, Jade Helm 2 is set to begin. That was the second major thing I noticed happening during the Jubilee year. It's called UEX, which is short for the Unconventional Warfare Exercise 2016. It begins in March and according to one person in special operations in the military, they are expected to extract domestic terrorists and take them to an impromptu detention facility. At that facility, they are expected to train foreign troops to take over the detention of the prisoners. This is particularly startling when you realize that the US government has turned their attention away from Islamic terrorists and are now focused on so-called domestic anti-government extremists. In other words, any American who is unhappy with the government. And United Nations vehicles have been spotted now being moved throughout the US. In one of many surreal moments for me, I happened to be researching who was warning of impending martial law and FEMA camps and was looking at an article in which Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia predicted that the Supreme Court will eventually authorize another wartime abuse of civil rights such as the internment camps for Japanese Americans during World War II. He warned, you are kidding yourself if you think the same thing will not happen again. Soon after reading that article, I became aware of the news that Scalia was dead and there was no investigation nor autopsy into his death. You have to question the timing of a Supreme Court judge warning Americans that martial law was coming and soon after winding up dead in very suspicious circumstances. Then the next thing that occurred was what really made me think that there is really something to the Jubilee year. On December 8th of 2015, the Pope, completely unexpectedly and without warning, announced an emergency Jubilee year while rolling out men and machine guns and declaring a no-fly zone near the Vatican. Catholic Holy Jubilee years normally take place every 25 years unless a Pope decrees an extraordinary one to bring attention to a particular need or topic. The next one was to be held in 2025, but Pope Francis called a special one on the theme of mercy, a major part of his push for a less judgmental and more inclusive church. We have to put mercy before judgment, he said. That was amazing enough, but he then went on to warn the world of impending disaster. In a solemn sermon at the Vatican, Pope Francis announced that Christmas last year will be a charade due to the fact that the globe is currently engaging in World War III. He then said, while the world starves, burns, and descends further into chaos, we should realize that this year's Christmas celebrations for those who choose to celebrate it may be their last. So, all in one fell swoop, the Pope announced an emergency jubilee year, one of mercy, he said, which comes before judgment, and then he said that this last Christmas may be our last. This gets even more interesting with a book that came out in 2012 called Petrus Romanus, where the authors made two startling predictions. Their first was that Pope Benedict, who was still in office at the time, would abdicate the papacy. That had not happened in over 600 years and it then occurred soon after. The second prediction, which they say was based on the 600-year-old prophecy by Saint Malachi, who, through inspiration from God, reportedly penned the names of the next 112 popes in succession. As it turns out, Benedict's resignation would lead to the eventual election of Pope Francis, the 112th person on the list. Where things get scary is that the prophecy ends with Francis. After him, Malachi listed no more successors. The prophecy itself refers to this final pope as Petrus Romanus, or Peter the Roman. According to Malachi's prophecy, the world is headed into dark times, saying, In extreme persecution, the seat of the Holy Roman Church will be occupied by Peter the Roman, who will pastor his sheep in many tribulations, and when these things are finished, the city of seven hills will be destroyed, and the terrible or fearsome judge will judge his people. The end. Uh, this... <laughs> I don't really know what to say. A pattern certainly seems to be appearing. 
It goes on too. The next thing that really solidified for me that this jubilee year is incredibly important and that the elites who control the world are well aware of it was what happened at the recent Davos conference in Switzerland. Davos, much like Bilderberg, is where the elites who control everything get together to celebrate how they are turning the whole world into a tax slave farm and discuss plans for the future. Right near the top of the food chain of globalist control institutions is the Bank of International Settlements, or BIS. It is known as the Central Bank of Central Banks. At Davos this year, William White, the Swiss-based chairman of the OECD's Review Committee and former chief economist of the BIS, warned that the global financial system had become dangerously unstable and faces an avalanche of bankruptcies that will test social and political stability. That wasn't news to us, but interesting coming from someone like White. But his next statement made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up as I read it. He said, It will become obvious in the next recession that many of these debts will never be serviced or repaid, and this will be uncomfortable for a lot of people who think they own assets that are worth something. The only question is whether we are able to look reality in the eye and face what is coming in an orderly fashion, or whether it will be disorderly. Debt jubilees have been going on for 5,000 years, as far back as the Sumerians. Of course, the reporter did not question what White meant when he said debt jubilee, but it showed me right away that not only is the jubilee year something real, but the elites are well aware of it. Not only aware of it, but warning people of it, it seems. That's the interesting thing. It's not like I'm the only one who has been making these warnings. There is a long list of very big people who have all said the same. I suppose it's like that saying, let those who have ears listen. Most people just aren't listening. In January, elite insider George Soros warned of a crisis coming that is similar to 2008, a time when US markets collapsed nearly 50%. The Bank of International Settlements has also warned, just a few days ago, that the markets are on the verge of a global debt crisis. In fact, just days into the Jubilee year, the IMF, the UN, the BIS and Citibank all warned an economic crisis is imminent. The Royal Bank of Scotland in January warned investors to brace for a cataclysmic year and said investors should be afraid. Even Peter Thiel of Facebook and PayPal fame has said that the US economy will break around the 2016 election. So what does this all mean? What do you think is going to happen? Of course I can't say for sure, but if you are not preparing for some sort of crisis right now, you'd have to be crazy. You have to expect a major crisis or collapse to happen sometime soon. I've been researching this since before 2010 and fully expected a collapse between 2015 and 2020, and that's before I found out about the Shemitah and Jubilee. But the more I look into these occult financial elite plans, the more I'm convinced something big is going to happen sooner rather than later. For example, there are a lot of questions about the Georgia Guidestones. It was created in 1980, but no one is sure who did it. It has a number of occult things on it and even calls for the world to be depopulated to under 500 million people, a decrease of about 90%. There are numbers and letters on the side which some think point to the date of August 14th, 2016. That date happens to be a Jewish holiday called Tisha B'Av, the saddest day in the Jewish calendar. It is the ninth day of the Hebrew month of Av and the day on which both the Babylonians and the Romans destroyed the first and second temples in Jerusalem. Like the Shemitah, this day is like a time of washing away. And then there's Bo Polni of Gold 2020 Forecast. After we put out our Shemitah video last summer and pointed to the date of September 13th, he came out and said that those dates wouldn't mark a major collapse. He said that the reason is that this is the seventh Shemitah or Jubilee year following this Shemitah. And his analysis of the timing is that the major collapse will fall between this March and May, but that it will continue all the way through until the end of the Jubilee year on October 2nd or 3rd. The interesting thing about that is the Chinese yuan will be added to the IMF SDR basket on October 1st, which is a Saturday. Whenever there is a major crisis or change in the financial system, they always do it on a weekend. As well, many people noticed the amazing string of blood moons and eclipses in 2014 and 2015, which all happened to fall on Jewish holidays. But what many haven't noticed is that three more happened in 2016. 
One has just passed on the Lunar Sabbath on March 9th. And this video should be out by the time the Blood Moon happens on March 23rd, which is Passover, which Bo Polny expects will be the start of the Jubilee Collapse. And then there is a lunar eclipse on September 16th of this year on the Jewish holiday Sukkot. Given everything else happening, I strongly suggest everyone get their financial, physical and spiritual houses in order this year. Are there any specifics that you expect this year? I would say to keep a close eye on the culminating potential World War III in the Middle East. The Jubilee occurs every 49 years. On the last two there were events of great interest in Israel. In 1967 was the Six Day War in which Israel shocked the world by defeating all of its enemies in six days. And in 1918 the British Empire captured Jerusalem from the Arabs. Both were historical moments for Israel. And be prepared for more incredible market volatility and collapses to begin, possibly as soon as this month, March. And even more certainly expect the economies in the West to further implode. By many metrics they already are. And if this is even just a replay of 2008, it will be much worse because everything is so much worse than it was in 2008. Look for the elites to take advantage of a massive depression and market collapse to bring in more tyrannical measures, travel and capital controls, and potential unrest surrounding it resulting in martial law in various places. These things will change life in the West as we know it. How can people protect themselves? Protection first and then profits. That's what's good about understanding where we're headed. We can make calculated bets in various areas and since we implemented our Shemitah analysis, we've had investment strategies that went up a thousand percent or more. And in that regard, we have advised to own gold and silver. Since the beginning of the year, they have performed very well with gold rising dramatically to start the year. But even though it has made good profits, the key is safety. It is important to get a significant portion of your assets outside of the Western financial system as soon as possible and into things like precious metals and other hard assets. I'd suggest you do it now. We also have suggested a number of other ways to be safe and even take advantage of what's going on that we outline in a free white paper I'm offering to anyone watching this video. Our last white paper which focused on Shemitah provided critical information to readers and received millions of views from readers and thousands later became subscribers. I highly recommend you take a look at the white paper on the Jubilee year because it gives you important actionable points. You want your family to stay safe and you even want to profit from what's going on. Read your free white paper and you'll be well on your way to finding out. And if you then subscribe to the Dollar Vigilante newsletter, you'll get critical, actionable information on a bi-monthly basis that's proven to work. With everything going on, making a small investment to receive truthful, accurate, and actionable advice on making money and staying safe is of the utmost importance in these upsetting times. Because of our Shemitah analysis, we know what to look for in the markets. Last summer, we told Dollar Vigilante subscribers to purchase far out of the money put options on the S&P 500. In three days in August alone, they rose in value more than 4,500%. At the time, I also suggested getting into Bitcoin near $200. It subsequently rose more than 100% within two months. And since then, we've had numerous other calls that have risen for triple-digit gains within a matter of days. In January and early February, all of our trades had gains and three of them rose more than 100%, with one hitting over 450%. Our results are proven. Our analysis, when it comes to the markets, is absolutely original. You won't find it anywhere else. Here's my guarantee. No one is covering this space like we are or providing the suggestions we're making. There aren't even any financial advisors or newsletters covering cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. I told subscribers to purchase Bitcoin at $3 in 2011 and it then went on to hit over $1,000. And even this year, we told subscribers about a new cryptocurrency in January. It has already risen more than 400% since then. These are critical times and you must stay informed from sources you can trust. Most people are unaware that what happened in Cyprus and Greece, with bank bail-ins and shutdowns, will happen all throughout Europe and the rest of the West. Most people are also unaware that international diversification of precious metals will be urgently important as fiat paper currencies like the euro and the dollar begin to fail. 
and most people are unaware that if their stock brokerage goes bankrupt under current law and structure, the stocks they own become the brokerages and they could lose them completely. Any final advice? Turn off your TV now. Things like CNBC are meant to keep you in the market until the collapse. Television is called programming for a reason. It is mostly propaganda, and that includes all mainstream media owned by the same people who are orchestrating this very collapse. Now is the time to do your own research and take your financial and personal matters into your own hands. Please start with our free white paper accompanying this video. It's urgent that you take a look at it. The new white paper does for 2016 what our Shemitah white paper did for 2015. We show you not just the how and what when it comes to political, military, and economic crises, but the when and how. We cracked the code of Shemitah, and now we've cracked the code of the Jubilee year, with the help of many people, including Jonathan Kahn. Well, always fascinating, never boring. Hopefully enough people hear this to protect themselves before it's too late. To receive your time-limited white paper with critical information on how to protect yourself and profit from the upcoming Jubilee destruction, go to SurviveShmita.com or click here or in the notes below. Then subscribe to The Dollar Vigilante at DollarVigilante.com slash subscribe. It's one thing to understand what's happening generally, but quite another to receive bi-monthly specifics on the disasters that are occurring around us. Make sure to subscribe to this free YouTube channel as well. Throughout the remainder of the Jubilee year, there'll be videos, interviews, and more. These will include further Super Shemitah videos coming soon. Click on subscribe now to make sure you don't miss them. And please share this video. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence Please act now to ensure your wealth and safety in these treacherous times. To receive your free white paper on how to survive and profit from the Super Shemitah and Jubilee Collapse, go to SurviveShemitah.com.